Do you love books? What about enigmatic books? Well, then you're in the right place. No! Beneath the golden sands and ancient pyramids of Egypt, a startling discovery has emerged. A 5,000-year-old book called the Book of Enoch has been unearthed in a forgotten tomb. It holds deep secrets that could redefine our understanding of the past as well as change our perspective of the future. This 5,000-year-old book has revealed a horrifying message about humanity. Joe Rogan believes that the contents of this book are going to challenge our notions of history and mankind forever. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of this book that might just hold a horrifying message for us all and change the way we remember our ancestors from the past. In Egypt, a land brimming with ancient mysteries, archaeologists stumbled upon something truly extraordinary. Nestled in the sands near the Nile River, they unearthed a site that was more than a regular archaeological site. It contained a surprising discovery in the form of a 5,000-year-old book. The Book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew text that offers a unique perspective on biblical stories. Traditionally attributed to Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, this text explores themes such as the origins of evil, fallen angels, the formidable Nephilim, a great flood, and prophecies about the end times. Beyond these themes, the book also explores the complex relationship between humans and the divine, offering insight into early Jewish mysticism. It describes Enoch's journeys to heaven and his revelations about the workings of the cosmos and the fate of souls. Interestingly, the book of Enoch is referenced in various other religious texts, underscoring its influence in ancient religious thought. Despite its historical significance, the book was excluded from the canonical Hebrew Bible, leading to its gradual obscurity in Western religious traditions. But its recent discovery has revealed a horrifying message that has brought it back to the forefront. In the late 1940s, young Bedouin shepherds, near the ancient settlement of Qumran along the northwestern shores of the Dead Sea, stumbled upon something remarkable. While tending to their flock, one shepherd accidentally dislodged a rock in a cliff, leading to a resonant sound that piqued their curiosity. Venturing into the cave, they found a collection of large clay vessels. Inside these vessels were leather scrolls and papyrus, later determined by scholars to be over 2,000 years old. These ancient texts, once uncovered and studied, have provided invaluable insights into a bygone era. They offer a glimpse into a different time of human history, one filled with mythical narratives and apocalyptic visions. The discovery of such scrolls is not just an archaeological triumph, but also a reminder of human beliefs and stories that have shaped our understanding of the past. The Book of Enoch in particular, stands as proof of the complexity and depth of ancient theological and philosophical thought. This remarkable find in the Qumran caves quickly grabbed the attention of treasure hunters and archaeologists alike. Over time, they unearthed tens of thousands of scroll fragments in nearby caves. This treasure trove included between 800 and 900 texts, among which the Book of Enoch stood out prominently. This ancient compilation, divided into five parts, the Book of Parables, the Book of Vigils, the Astronomical Book, the Epistles of Enoch, and the Dream Visions, adds up to a hundred chapters of intriguing content. The Book of Enoch is a monumental work, covering themes from the origins of evil and apocalyptic visions to rewards, punishments, and the final judgment. One part of the book, comprising chapters 6 to 36, deals with the universe, the Tree of Life, Jerusalem, and angels, as mentioned in Genesis. It describes how these angels, known as the Nephilim, interacted with human women, leading to the birth of beings with significant knowledge. These Nephilim, depicted as giant-like figures, played a crucial role in the advent of a catastrophic flood. Furthermore, 
The book elaborates on the cosmic hierarchy and the roles of various angels and archangels, providing a detailed account of the spiritual realm. The text is known for its rich, allegorical language, which has led to diverse interpretations and scholarly debates. The Book of Enoch's influence can be seen in various other ancient texts and has played a significant role in shaping early Jewish and Christian views. The connection between angels and humans as written in the Book of Enoch has sparked various interpretations. Some believe these sons of God were indeed fallen angels who mated with human women, a concept echoed in the Book of Enoch. This portrayal of the Nephilim as giants aligns with their supernatural origins, though it also raises theological questions about the physical interaction between angels or demons and humans. Another section, The Parables of the Likeness, narrates apocalyptic events involving the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days. These prophecies, resonating with the biblical book of Revelation, detail a comprehensive vision of human history, from its inception to the final judgment. However, the Book of Enoch is not without its contradictions, particularly when compared to the Bible. For instance, it attributes all earthly corruption to a demon named Azazel, in contrast to the biblical focus on Satan as the originator of sin. Moreover, the book's astronomical descriptions, such as Enoch's mapping of all the stars, conflict with contemporary scientific knowledge and biblical teachings, shedding light on why it was not included in the Bible. The Book of Enoch also describes certain details in a way that don't always line up with the Bible's version. It talks about people and events from before the Great Flood in ways that are different from what you'd read in the Book of Genesis. These differences have made people argue about whether the information in the Book of Enoch is accurate. This has led to the Book of Enoch being seen more as an interesting religious story from the past rather than a part of the official religious texts in Judaism and Christianity. But even with these differences, the Book of Enoch is still really useful for understanding how religious beliefs and stories changed over time. The Book of Enoch is actually split into two parts, the first part known as the Ethiopic Book of Enoch, and the second part called the Slavonic Book of Enoch or the Book of the Secrets of Enoch. There's a bit of debate among scholars about the original language of this book. Some say it's in the Ge'ez language, with bits and pieces found in Aramaic from the Dead Sea Scrolls, along with Greek and Latin fragments. Others think it might have been written in Hebrew or Aramaic. Many historians have debated how the book survived. If Enoch, who was Noah's great-grandfather, really wrote this book, how did it survive Noah's great flood? Enoch's history is equally fascinating. His father, Jared, had him at the old age of 162 and went on to live another 800 years. Enoch, on the other hand, became a dad at 65 and lived to be 365 years old. That's young for his time, considering people back then lived for centuries. Enoch's life was quite pleasing to God. He even walked with him. And then, all of a sudden, at the age of 365, he was taken from Earth. Enoch's relatively short life of 365 years actually links him to solar cycles. Some scholars think this connection might be why solar calendars were used back then. So this Book of Enoch isn't just a collection of ancient stories, it's a window into the life and times of a key figure from our past and gives us a glimpse into the thinking and beliefs of that era. The discovery of the Book of Enoch was more than just about unearthing an ancient book. It was a reminder of the endless stories waiting to be found hidden beneath our feet, just waiting for the right moment to be brought back into the light of the modern world. Another recent discovery in Egypt is shedding new light on ancient literature. This big find, detailed in an Egyptian archaeology journal, is really shaking up what we know about the origins of ancient texts. It shows just how creative and dedicated people were back then as they tried to figure out the mysteries of life after death. One of the key figures in this field, Perita Lucarelli, an Egyptology curator at UC Berkeley, points out that ancient Egyptians were really into understanding every aspect of life, especially what comes after death. They saw death as a doorway to a new kind of existence. 
The main discovery here is this text called the Book of Two Ways. It's one of the oldest copies we have, found inside a coffin that had been overlooked by grave robbers and archaeologists for ages. This book was discovered in the Egyptian village of Deir al-Barsha during excavation work. This ancient text was actually written right inside the coffin, with messages and pictures covering two cedar panels. These writings refer specifically to the Book of Two Ways. Everything in the tomb dates back to the era of Pharaoh Mentuhotep II, who ruled Egypt until around 2010 BC. The research led by Harko Willems, an Egyptologist from the University of Leuven in Belgium, reveals that these coffin texts were meant to help the deceased join the gods in the afterlife. This particular coffin belonged to a high-status woman named Ankh, and the texts inside give us a glimpse into her journey after death. They suggest she might have faced challenges like fighting off evil spirits or even physical dangers like fire. These challenges were represented in the book through symbols and maps that are pretty tough to understand today. Some experts think these images were more about life than death, possibly part of rituals to bring gods or people back to life. This kind of text was a symbol of rebirth, not just in the afterlife, but maybe in this world too. The Book of Thoth also stands out as a recent and awe-inspiring discovery. This sacred text, believed to be authored by Thoth, the Egyptian god of writing and knowledge, is shrouded in mystery and legend. Said to contain various spells, the Book of Thoth promises extraordinary powers to its readers, such as understanding animal speech and beholding gods. Reading its contents is said to bestow the wisdom to master secrets of the earth, sea, and stars. The book, dating back to the Greco-Roman era, is named after Thoth, revered as the patron deity of libraries, scribes, and writing. This respect of Thoth is similar to the Greek god Hermes, known as the guide of souls. Both Thoth and Hermes are central figures in the philosophical tradition of Hermeticism, which focuses on ancient revelations by gods, compiled into a collection known as the Hermetic Corpus. This collection, which includes the Book of Thoth, is a collection of Egyptian and Greek knowledge, covering a wide array of subjects from rituals and temple construction to geography and medicine. According to myth, the first two pages of this spell book hold the key to understanding animal language, achieving immortality, and perceiving hidden gods. The book posits that humans hold a unique position, bridging the gap between angels and gods, with the duty to create beauty akin to the divine. Legends abound about the Book of Thoth, with some viewing it as an ancient guide to alchemy and others as a tool for predicting the future. The book's history is filled with tales of its concealment and discovery. It was initially hidden near Koptos, guarded by serpents. In one legendary tale, the Egyptian prince Neferkapta battled these serpents to acquire the book, only to face tragic consequences, the loss of his family and his own life. Centuries later, Ramses the Great's son, Zedna, a scholar and magician, embarked on a quest to find the book, which led him to a tomb and a series of illusions orchestrated by the spirit of Neferkapta. Among ancient Egyptian mysteries, the Book of Thoth holds a special place. It is also believed that there's another manuscript, known as the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, thought to have been around for an incredible 36,000 years and written by a priest king named Thoth, who supposedly ruled over the legendary city of Atlantis. These tablets are famous for describing how to make a philosopher's stone, which is all about changing one material into another. Thoth was considered a scribe of the gods. In fact, there are ancient writings that suggest the Egyptian gods might not even exist without Thoth's words. He's credited with writing something really important, and there's talk that this could be an ancient book of spells hidden in the City of the Dead, right next to Prince Neferkapta's resting place. While we don't have solid proof of its existence, some think this mysterious book might be under the Sphinx's huge paw, or among the many Egyptian papyrus scrolls, 
that are still being translated today. But the Book of Thoth is about understanding the world and its mysteries, like the changing seasons, diseases, and the cycle of day and night. The spells in the book are more like prayers than magic tricks. They talk about humans being somewhere between mortal and divine, touching on the themes of death, rebirth, and the mysteries of life. Although we don't have a direct link between the Book of Thoth and tarot cards, the true contents of the Book of Thoth are still a mystery. Many believe that finding this book could change the world for the better. But there's a warning in the ancient Egyptian myths. Those who try to uncover its secrets might face misfortune and suffering. Reading the Book of Thoth might even bring divine punishment because such knowledge isn't meant for mere mortals. In another discovery at the Saqqara burial site, the Egyptian Antiquities Ministry found a funerary temple linked to Queen Nate near the Pyramid of Pharaoh Teti. Among the artifacts found were pieces from the 18th and 19th dynasties of Egypt, including a 13-meter-long papyrus scroll from the Book of the Dead. This scroll was like a guide to help the dead navigate the afterlife. The site also revealed wooden masks, a shrine for the god Anubis, statues and games meant for the afterlife. Another ancient text, the Thule Papyrus, dating back almost 3,500 years, talks about UFOs as shining disks in the sky. This account from around 1480 BC became well known in the 1930s. It's just one of many mysterious and fascinating aspects of ancient Egyptian literature that we're still trying to fully understand. These are not the only examples of ancient books discovered that provide insight into how our ancestors lived. There's also the Popol Vuh, also known as the Book of the People, this is an ancient Maya document that dates back to the mid-1500s. It's all about Mayan culture and mythology. If you understand the Mayan language K'iche', you can actually read it. The Popol Vuh tells the story of the creation of the world, the life and times of the gods, and the journey of the K'iche' people up to the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. It tells a fascinating story about hero twins who turn into the sun and the moon, Originally, there was just sky and sea until the creators made earth, animals, men, and women. This book was first discovered in the 1700s by a priest in Guatemala. He copied the original text, which has since been lost, and translated it into Spanish. Today, you can find his work in the Newberry Library in Chicago. It's a valuable insight into the rich history and beliefs of the Maya people, showing how ancient cultures tried to make sense of the world around them. In a way, discoveries like this are a gift. They're a chance to pause, reflect, and think about how we can do better. They show us that while technology and societies have evolved, the core of human nature remains the same. And maybe by understanding the past, we can make a better future. It's about taking ancient wisdom and applying it to our lives today. Thanks for exploring with us on Beyond Discovery. If you enjoyed these revelations, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. It's unbelievable.